Hi everyone, Mr East here. Let's start off by going through the practice activity from the previous lesson. So the first one, three eighths equal to something added three times. Repeat addition, we know they're unit fractions. I can look at the denominator eight to know they must all be eights. The numerator is three, so three one eighths would be equal to three eighths. Next one down, four eighths. Again, we know it's repeated addition of a unit fraction. How many would there be this time if the numerator is four? There'd be four lots of one eighth, so four one eighths added together. Next one down, same thing. Let's look at the pattern. Oh, yep, still the denominator eight. So we know the denominator of our fractions will be eight. How many of the unit fractions will there be? There'll be five, won't there? The numerator is five. So five eighths is equal to five one eighths. Now, next one down, this time we've got sevenths. Let's see how many sevenths we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, one sevenths. That means my numerator will be four. My denominator will stay as seven. And then finally, oh, lots of missing boxes. We could start at either bit. We could start at the denominator. Maybe I'll start with that. We have the denominators eight, which means in my fraction, it must be five eighths. And if my numerator is five, that means there'll be five one eighths. Now this question definitely was more challenging. Stan makes a repeating pattern with some white and gray cubes. Write a repeated addition of a unit fraction to show what fraction of his model is made of gray cubes. So to do that, the first thing we have to do is to work out how many cubes there are in the whole. Now I can see here the top face of this gray cube and the front face, but that is still just one cube. I can try and count all of those cubes that I can see, but some of you might have noticed that there are some hidden cubes. You might be able to work out how many there are, but I'm gonna split our hole into the top and bottom layer so that you can see all of them. There, you can see all of the cubes. Now, like I said, some of you might have worked that out. Some of you might have seen that if there are eight cubes in the top layer, that means there's also eight cubes in the second layer. Eight and eight is equal to 16. So there are 16 cubes altogether. So now we know there's 16 cubes, we can think about what our repeated addition will look like. Let's start with this gray cube. If we're writing our fraction, we can write our fraction bar first. What's our denominator? How many cubes are there in total? There's 16 cubes. And that one gray cube is one of those 16. So we can start off with a unit fraction of 1 16th. Then let's think about this gray cube. That's also 1 16th, so we can add that. Then we can continue making sure we include all of our gray cubes. So the next gray cube means we add another 16th, the next gray cube, another 16th, and so on, and so on. So, We've included all of our gray cubes. So what is that going to be equal to? 1 16th had 1 16th had 1 16th all the way to the end. How many 1 16th have we added together? We've added eight 1 16th. So the final part will be is equal to eight 16th. So to start today's lesson, we're going to think about something you would have looked at in a previous lesson. On the left of the screen, we can see I've got a bar model and underneath the bar model, we've got a number line. I'm going to show different numbers of parts and we're going to think about what that will be as a fraction and where that fraction will be on our number line. So to start with, I've shaded in one part. Why is it one fifth? Because the whole has been split into five equal parts. I can see those equal parts on our bar model and we can see on the number line that there are five equal parts on the number line. And remember, we said that we can put one fifth at the end of where that part is in our bar model, and that's the unique place that one fifth is written on our number line. So we can say this is one one fifth, and we can write it with one as the numerator and five as the denominator. Let's continue our pattern. This time, two of our equal parts are shaded, so it is two fifths. We can say that's two one fifths, and we can write it as two as the numerator and five as our denominator. I'm sure you can start to spot the pattern. 
this time say it with me three one fifths and that is written as three as the numerator and five as the denominator four one fifths four as the numerator five as the denominator and we can see where four fifths is on a number line when four fifths is a number and then finally we've shaded in all of the parts so we can say and you said in previous lessons that this is five one fifths and it's written as five as the numerator and five as the denominator and that's the part i want us to focus on here last lesson or previous lesson you will have said this generalization when the numerator and denominator are the same how can i finish that generalization what can we say if the numerator and denominator are the same? Did anyone say this? The fraction is equivalent to one whole. Let's look at the bar model in that case. The whole of the bar model is shaded in. We've moved the whole way along this line. So we can say when the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction is equivalent to one whole. OK, let's look at that in one more way. I got the same number line. And I got the same bar model. At the beginning of my number line, I'm going to put a zero, and the next whole number is going to be one. So I'm going to put that at the end of our number line. Let's count up in fifths together. Zero, one one fifth, two one fifth, three one fifth, four one fifth, five one fifth. But look at the number line. Have I written five one fifths? No, in the red circle, I've written one. What do we then know about five one fifths and one? They would go at exactly the same point on our number line. That means they are equivalent to each other. Let's go back to our generalization. When the numerator and denominator are the same, before we said it's the whole, but what can we say now? We now know the fraction has a value of one. Let's say that together, say it with me. When the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction has a value of 1. Let's look at that with a different fraction. What do you think our fractions are going to be on our number line? How are we going to work out what fractions we're saying? Well, we can look at either the number line or we can look at our shape. Let's start with our number line because that's what we're trying to get used to and trying to get more familiar with. Remember, we have to think about the number of parts on a number line. So I've gone along two parts so far, three parts, four parts, five parts, six parts, seven parts, eight parts, nine parts. So there's nine parts on our number line. Not remember, we're not counting the number of lines, we're counting the number of parts. Let's check our diagram. One part, two parts, three parts, four parts, five parts, six parts, seven parts, eight parts, nine parts. Great, they match. So can you count up with me? So zero, one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, eight ninths, did anyone say nine ninths? You wouldn't be wrong, nine ninths, or we can say one. Why is that the case? Remember our generalization, say this with me. When the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction has a value of one. So if you said nine ninths, you weren't wrong, but we're now trying to learn that we can also say one. One more time with me. Here I've got an empty egg box. So let's see what's going to happen when we add one egg each time. What's the fraction of the whole egg box that's going to increase as we add one egg each time? Let's check our egg box, shall we? On the top row, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six empty spaces. Six plus six is equal to 12, so my fractions must be twelfths. Count up with me and remember our generalization and see if you can say the same thing as me at the end of our number line. Okay, off we go together. Zero, one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths, six twelfths, 
7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths, 10 twelfths, 11 twelfths, 1. Did you say 1 this time? Let's hope so. Why is that the case? Can you remember? Who can remember that generalization? Try and say it to yourself before I put it on the screen. Here it is in case you couldn't do that. When the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction has a value of 1. So here are the three number lines we've looked at. Let's think, what's the same, what's different? Pause the video, how many similarities and differences can you spot? Okay, now I'm going to start with the differences. Something I've noticed is the number of parts that each number line has been split up into is different. So let's think about how we can move along each number line and what fraction we would write at each individual part on the number line. So the first one, we're going to think about how many parts it's been split into. One part, two parts, three parts, four parts, five parts. Oh, it's the same as we've just done. So you should be good at that. Count along with me. Zero, one fifth, two fifths three-fifths, four-fifths, one. The next number line, how many parts are there? Did you say nine parts? Again, it's the same as the previous example. So again, count with me. Zero, one-ninth, two-ninths, three-ninths, four-ninths, five-ninths, six-ninths, seven-ninths, eight-ninths, one. And finally, our final number line, how many parts has that been split into? It's been split into 12 equal parts. So now count in twelfths with me. Zero, one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths, six twelfths, seven twelfths, eight twelfths, nine twelfths, ten twelfths, eleven twelfths, one. So what's the same about both of these number lines? Is there something the same that we said for each of them? I can think of two similarities. Zero was at the beginning of all three of our number lines. And because our number lines are the same length, one was also at the same part of our number line. That's something really important. Let's look at that in a bit more detail. So on our number line, we didn't have five fifths, did we? What did we have instead? We had one. And we said that you weren't wrong if you said five fifths, but we are learning from our generalization that when the numerator and the denominator are the same, the fraction has a value of one. So let's look at our next fraction. We've got nine ninths. Did we write that on our middle number line? No, we wrote one. So we can say that nine ninths is equal to one. What about 12 twelfths? Did we write that on our final number line? No, and again, what can we say it's equivalent to? We can say it's equal to one. And why is that the case? Let's go back to our generalization. When the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction has a value of 1. It's time for some practice activities for you to do. For all of these practice activities, I want you to use the generalization to help you. So let's say it one more time together. When the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction has a value of 1. So there's three missing boxes there for you to fill in. The next thing I want you to do, still using the generalization, is to look at these three number lines. I want you first of all to see if you can work out what the unknown values are on each of the number lines. Then the third thing I'd like you to do is look at the three number lines above and write down what's the same and what's different. Think about what we've discussed in this lesson and see if you can refer to our generalization in your explanation. Final thing I'd like you to do is complete the following expression in different ways. I've given four ways there. But then think about this. How many different ways do you think there are to complete the expression? Why do you think there's that many ways? See if you can convince me and we'll talk about this in the beginning of the next lesson. Good luck.